photos work? Are they useful? Should they be used? If so, when? How do you do software escrows right? I am a long time practicing computer lawyer, and for many years I taught a course in computer law at a major law school. But in the interest of full disclosure, I am also one of the founders of Escrow Tech International, a software escrow company. This disclosure reflects both my experience and my bias relevant to the topic of software escrows. Although software escrows have been used since the 1970s, they are an increasingly common practice. Today, most computer lawyers deal with them occasionally, if not frequently. If you are an attorney, you may be asked to advise a client concerning a software escrow, or you may need to educate your client about the option of using a software escrow in a variety of situations. This presentation is intended to provide you with information useful for these purposes. Occasionally, I hear some attorneys simplistically dismiss software escrows as ineffectual. Whenever I hear this, I think back to my first experience with software escrows. More than two decades ago, I was a young attorney tasked with the responsibility of representing a large healthcare organization in connection with the licensing of some clinical software applications of very high importance to the hospitals within the organization. <clears throat> this being my first significant light software license transaction, I read whatever I could find on software licensing, including a checklist of provisions that should appear in a software license agreement. The checklist mentioned software escrows, but provided only a brief explanation. In the negotiation of the license agreement, I was able to include a provision for an escrow of the software source code. Sure enough, less, less than two years later, the software company fell into bankruptcy. The trustee was very hostile toward my client, and no further support or maintenance of the software was forthcoming. Fortunately, through the escrow provision in the agreement, my client had access to the source code independent of the defunct software company and the trustee. For many years, my client used the source code to maintain and enhance the software. It worked, and my client thought I was a genius. Of course, the truth be told, I was just an inexperienced attorney who followed a suggestion found in a checklist. And in looking back, there is much that I did wrong in drafting the escrow provision. But despite the deficiencies, it worked well for my client. Over the years, including as recently as last year, I have been reminded by members of my client's IT and in-house legal departments of this experience and repeatedly given credit for my foresight, as undeserved as that credit is. When anyone says that software escrows don't work, I always think back on my first experience with software escrows. For me, this experience as an attorney was so positive that it was a major factor in my decision to join with a software engineer to start escrow tech. Let's turn back to our initial question, do software escrows work? The answer is yes, if you do the escrow right. If you don't, then the answer may still be yes if you were lucky, as I was in the story I just told, but may very well be no, as explained by this presentation. First, a brief explanation of software escrows. A software escrow is intended to protect a software licensee by ensuring that the licensee will have access to the software source code in the event that the licensor goes out of business falls into bankruptcy, discontinues support of the licensed software, breaches maintenance obligations, or some other release condition occurs. Typically, a software escrow is used when a licensor licenses the object or executable code of the software to a licensee, but withholds the source code. As a result, the licensee is totally dependent on the licensor for maintenance updates and enhancements to the software. Simplistically, a software escrow can be described as follows. First, the licensor delivers a copy of the source code to an escrow company. Second, the escrow company holds the source code. Third, the escrow company releases the source code to the licensee only if a release condition occurs. Fourth, the escrow company returns the source code to the licensor if the escrow terminates without the occurrence of a release condition. For a more detailed explanation of software escrows, please go to the link I've displayed uh, on the screen. You should also note that interest in software escrows has also expanded 
into the rapidly growing area of software as a service, or simply SaaS or SaaS. SaaS escrows are necessarily more sophisticated from both technical and contractual perspectives. Ray Wang, a vice president of Forrester Research, a prominent independent technology and market uh, research uh, company, recently published his comments on SaaS escrows. Mr. Wing stated, and I quote, with no access to the code or application when a SaaS vendor goes bankrupt or fails to meet performance requirements, now's the time to ask your SaaS provider if they provide a SaaS software escrow. This should be included in all criteria during SaaS vendor selection. Those who provide SaaS escrow deliver an additional benefit. Peace of mind that data will be doubly backed up by both the vendor and the software escrow company. Sometimes software escrows are referred to as technology escrows. For clarification, software escrows are a subset of technology escrows. Some technology escrows do not involve software or source code. For example, technical documents, chemical formulas, prototypes, drawings, and other embodiments of intellectual property can be held in a technology escrow. This presentation focuses on software escrows, but many of the concepts apply to other types of technology escrows. My feel-good story about my first experience with software escrows should not lull you into thinking that there are no potential problems. The most common or significant problems, and most often cited reasons for assuming that software escrows don't work, are what I refer to as the know-how problem and the build -up.